All right, so to replace your end links, and I apologize for it being dark out, you have this top bolt up here, which is uh, an 18 millimeter. You have this bottom bolt down there, which is a 15 millimeter. And then on the back side of that bolt, the bottom down there is the back side of that 15 millimeter, and that's a 13 millimeter. So you've got 13, 15, oh, and then uh, on the back side of your sway bar link, this is actually huh, impossible to do with one hand. On the back side of your sway bar link right here, it's actually, uh, it'll be easier to see on the new ones, uh, but it's notched, our flat sides on front and back. And that'll hold a 17 millimeter wrench. So 13, 15, 17, 18 to go through. Uh, obviously make sure, I mean, it's pretty simple from there on out, but it's, that's what you're looking at. 13, 15, 17, 18. Um, so first step, pry off the bottom, unscrew that sucker. You might have to tap your bolt backwards a little bit to get him some free play to slide the bottom of the link off. Unbolt the top, push that out, and it'll twist off, as you'll see. I was saying, you can fit a 17 in, a 17 millimeter open end socket or open end wrench on the back side of your uh, top of your sway bar link, and then. Like so. Now, you can just pry the bottom. Not that you can see, but you're going to pry the bottom out or put the top in. Uh, you may need to jostle the suspension around a little bit. I'm kind of doing this blind with a flashlight, one hand in the dark. Um, since that bottom loose is actually uh, the bottom bolt is actually loose, you may actually be able to pop that bottom bolt backwards a little bit enough to pop this front off, which is what I'm going to try to do here now. So it's a little hard to see, but what I ended up doing is actually the it's easier to push the top of this out like so. And then the whole bottom just slides out, just like so. You can see on the bottom of this one, well, obviously this one was doing nothing. So we're gonna go with the new one, fit it in place by walking back to the back of the car. Again, I apologize for doing this at night, but I, unlike some people, cannot stand the thought of my car rattling any longer than I have to. The reason I'm replacing these is because they do rattle quite loudly and uh, nothing more embarrassing than driving a nice shiny Jag, pulling up to the gas pump, having someone go, wow, that's a really nice car. Thanks. Rattle, 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 rattle as you go away. So, <laughs> As you can see, much jostling will be needed here. In this case, I might actually just pull them both out in the bottom, fit the top instead. This might actually be easier. There we go. Let's get the top on here.
Now I believe the top will also function from that same 17 millimeter. Um, now you can also see down here, I'm not quite lined up. I will have to put my jack under the bottom of this thing to get this actually lined up and in the bolt hole. Um, fortunately, I've got my car sitting back on a jack stand, so I can go ahead and do that in just a moment. As you can see, I just grabbed a cheap little scissors jack, threw it under the control arm, and now able to fit everything in. So we're going to grab our nut from before, fit that onto our bolt, tighten that up, tighten our bright shiny 18 mil on the top, and we're done and then just repeat on the other side. So, that's pretty much it. Yeah, went that hard. No problem at all. All right, and then when you're done, you drive it down the road, you look for bumps. Listen for any rattles. Now, I do believe the rear shock might have a tiny little bit of play in the bushing back there, but as far as the front goes, it's a whole lot better than what it was. And that's all there is to it. Once you've changed your uh, sway bar links, there are other bushings you can look for. I even turned my window down. Any other day I've been, I'd have heard it rattle. And as of right now, we are mostly rattle free. Job done.